Red Chair. Here we are again today with a very special guest and friend, Cem Sertoglu uh, from Turkey, a fellow VC. Um, Cem, good to see you. Good Such to be a here. Surprise that you're here in, in Lisbon. Um, who are you? Tell us. Um, thank you. It's uh, great to be here. Uh, we are a uh, early stage tech investor uh, focused on what we call emerging Europe. Uh, for us, that is uh, starting in the Baltics, coming down all the way south uh, to Turkey and Greece. We are focused on seed and Series A uh, opportunities uh, that are rooted in the region, usually going after global opportunities. And uh, we have been investing in the region since 2014 uh, as the fund. Before that, uh, my partners and I were uh, personal investors. Okay. So we are uh, founders turned angel investors turned uh, venture capital investors. And uh, how did it start? Because you became early bird. Uh... Yes. So uh, initially, the thinking was uh, taking advantage of the Series A uh, gap or uh, servicing the Series A gap in the region. We recognize that uh, back in 2012-2013, it was uh, quite re easy and reasonable for a great team with a good idea, maybe some traction to attract a couple of million dollars of seed funding. Across the region? Across the region. Specifically in some countries? A across the region. You know, there are certain parts, certain pockets of uh, Eastern Europe that we feel are better served when it comes to venture capital. For example, we always think about like Estonia is probably right. one of the uh, best served Beacons. countries uh, when it comes to venture capital. But uh, in general, mostly across the region, we think that there is a dislocation between the quality of uh, the talent, technical talent especially, and the uh, opportunities and the amount of venture capital available. Uh, again, it's less so um, in, in the seed stage or if a company is really you know, starting to perform and show metrics, they can go to London or Berlin or New York to raise their uh, sort of late stage funding. But in the Series A uh, there was period, a we felt there was a gap. So now we're focused on that. Usually the sort of five to eight million dollar uh, initial lead check into A rounds in the region. Right. Um, that's uh, where we tend to find most of our opportunities. And, and so then in 2014, how, how did you establish the fund? How, how did you come up with uh, this partnership with Early Bird? We, uh, we were investors in a uh, company called Peak Games and uh, Early Bird, uh, which at the time invested out of one fund uh, for uh, all of Europe, ended up leading the Series B round uh, for, uh, for Peak. And we got to meet my current partner, Roland, uh, through the process. And uh, as we shared with Roland, you know, uh, our thoughts around the opportunity in, uh, in Turkey, he shared with us his thoughts around an Eastern U European opportunity. And we felt the two uh, actually played well uh, together as a, as, a, as a combined regional uh, opportunity and decided to raise the fund. And in that process, we transformed Early Bird into a, uh, a family of uh, independent autonomous uh, funds. So I think we're a little bit old fashioned in that, uh, you know, we have small dedicated teams that are structured as fully independent funds with their own LPs, with their own management company and dedicated teams uh, to focus on different geographies. So we have a fund that is uh, focused on Western Europe. We have our fund, which is the Early Bird Digital Lease Fund, focused on Eastern Europe. And then we have a health fund that is only doing life sciences and health uh, technologies. Right, right. And you are leading the East Fund. Correct. Basically. We own and uh, run um, the East Fund. And so you have invested, in how many countries have you invested by now? Um, countries uh, we have, uh, actually I've never really counted, but uh, of course, you know, Turkey, Romania, Bulgaria, uh, Serbia, Slovakia, uh, now Poland, Estonia, so about seven or eight uh, countries in terms of our coverage. Uh, fund one, we had uh, 15 investments. 15. Uh, fund two, we are currently at 15. And, uh, you know, we'll uh, continue to, you know, focus on that, on that, on that sort region. of Series A yeah. uh, opportunity in the region. Yeah. So what is your kind of minimum ticket and maximum ticket currently? Um, historically, it's ranged between, you know, as low as half a million for uh, sort of seed opportunities that we uh, can build conviction around, all the way to around $10 million uh, for a first check into a company. So I'd say one to 10 million is the, is the broad range and sweet spot is 
you know, three to five or three to six million uh, as a first check. And do you feel there's different um, sort of realities across those countries? Of course, maybe Estonia is more sort of well known and so on. But what mm-hmm. about the other countries? Turkey is such a big country with so many opportunities, but then you have Bulgaria, Romania. We'll talk about Romania Correct. right um, after. So we have uh, you know, two countries in our region uh, which are uh, also happen to be sort of sizable domestic markets uh, like Turkey and mm-hmm. Poland. So in terms of anything that we would look at that operates in a single country or regionally, uh, it's probably in, in those two countries. Um, but uh, most of our uh, investments tend to be uh, product and technical teams, you know, based in the region, taking advantage of the strong technical uh, talent uh, that's 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 available. But then the market opportunity is uh, usually in the developed markets, mostly the U.S., uh, but also Western Europe. So uh, that typically tends to be the model. Uh, usually, when we invest, the uh, companies are still located in the region. Uh, starting to get their uh, first global customers. And then uh, with our uh, funding and involvement, uh, we end up fueling their uh, strong push into their core markets like the US. So that, now you are, I think, arguably, I've heard that you are probably the best performing fund ever in Europe or something like that. Tell we, us tell us why. Sure, uh, we've been very fortunate. Uh, so back in 2015, we were the seed investors uh, in UiPath. Uh, we were the first outside money. We led uh, UiPath seed round with a million dollar check. Uh, and that has, of course, led to uh, last year in 2021, in April, um, you know, last year's biggest uh, European IPO in history with UiPath uh, getting listed in the New York Stock Exchange. So that has uh, you know, driven the big performance of our, of our first fund. It's also been a great validator for our thesis around you know, the, the quality of the technical talent in the region. So you know, UiPath came as a, a bit of an outsider to the RPA market. Uh, you know, 12, what does UiPath do for those that don't know? Um, UiPath is uh, what, the global leader in robotic process automation, which means uh, building a, you know, the tool set to build software robots to free up humans from repetitive, predictable, kind of mindless tasks that still proliferate the, the corporate back office. Like, like what, for example? Uh, great examples would be invoice processing or claims processing in an uh, in a, um, uh, insurance company or a supply chain ERP data entry for an industrial company. Uh, there's still quite a few uh, functions in, in corporations and in enterprises that involve people having to do the work because the systems Input in the back, data correct, and the systems, the systems in the back hasn't haven't been integrated properly. Usually, because there are some legacy uh, software involved uh, without the proper APIs, etc. And of course, the industry in general is catching up to it. But between now and then, uh, the point where everything's integrated, there's still a big gap, and that sucks up lots of uh, uh, you know uh, productive uh, human time that can be actually directed to much better in our parlance sort of human functions right. as opposed to just very predictable automated and uh, or automatable repetitive tasks. Right. So essentially what you have is when, you, when we're talking about robots, it's essentially software that is programmed Correct. to pick up data and cal- correlate it with other data Correct. or input, move it from here to there. Correct. And how do you transform that? How did they transform that into a product? Because at, at the beginning, it seems like it's very... It's like a project and not and not a product. Correct. How do they do that? Um, the product, uh, our initial impression of it uh, reminded us of uh, uh, Microsoft Excel macros uh, that yep. you used to record, uh, where you can really abstract the uh, the input from uh, the input devices like the keyboard and the software, uh, and output devices like the screen. So uh, UiPath's product sits on a, uh, a desktop or a, or a server and interacts with the software almost the same way as a human does, literally moving a cursor across the screen and cutting and pasting certain fields into other fields across different enterprise applications. It's like a, a macro so, on steroids. Exactly. <laughs> you imagine it's like a macro that can open up your SAP and uh, you know input uh, data on different screens, different windows, not just only limited to a single application. Right. And so... 
you know, if you invested a million in the seed round, I can imagine more or less the valuation. And what was the valuation at IPO? And uh, what's it the IPO was uh, around $30 billion. Uh, and, uh, you know, the uh, it, it, again, it created uh, much of the uh, sort of uh, big distributions in the European venture capital uh, landscape last year. It, it was very much a uh, kind of a coming of age uh, story with a uh, with a European rooted software company uh, going public with such a big uh, IPO. Where did it go public? Which uh, in New York Stock Exchange. New York Stock Exchange. Very good. Impressive and um, uh, very good for Europe, right? That there is in particular someone from Turkey, from Eastern Europe, that actually finds the, the gem, <laughs> gem that found the gem <laughs> in a sense uh, in the whole market. So congratulations on Thank that. Thank you very much. And what do you think? How do you see things moving forward now that the market is more established uh, for for the whole region? Mm-hmm. And we'll cover the you know what's happening right now um, later. But how do you see if there was no war? What is there? How are things going? Uh, first of all, I think you know um, technology is about or technology innovation is about inspiration. And now what we're very very happy about is these success stories uh, growing from our part of the world is inspiring. Uh, founders to be bolder, to think bigger, uh, to aim higher. Um, many are, uh, you know, they grow at these great tech companies. You know, we're seeing examples of this in Estonia. You know, people who've been involved uh, with the building of companies like uh, like Skype and then uh, TransferWise, uh, etc. You know. Um, as they come up their careers, they've now seen a great tech company being, being built. built. So uh, you know, each replicate. of these talented guys, uh, they think that, you know, you know what, maybe I can build a similar uh, company. Maybe I can think as big as models. what I've uh, been able to create here. Uh, so we're seeing this very much at, at UiPath. Uh, you know, in, in our current fund, uh, we're uh, investors in a company called Payhawk. Uh, which was built by a team that came out of Telerik, which was a, a you know nice big exit in in Bulgaria. So uh, the team that saw Telerik got built uh, left Telerik and has uh, started uh, Payhawk. So we're seeing this type of um, you know, ecosystem development uh, by one uh, talented founders seeing great companies being built and getting more ambitious and bold uh, around those ideas, and sometimes having been part of that story, they then want to write their own story. Of course. Now, obviously, it's easier to back teams that have already proven themselves previously. But when you're looking at first-time teams and, and first-time entrepreneurs, what are the characteristics that say, this could be another UiPath one? Um, first of all, we generally feel that across the board, we are still underestimating the market opportunity in, in software. You know, we firmly believe that uh, every company needs to reinvent itself as a software company, as a technology company. Um, The incumbents that are not able to go through that transformation, I think will lag and ultimately fail and uh, will either be beaten by uh, their competitors who are able to complete that transformation or uh, be disrupted by newcomers who uh, go after that same opportunity. So uh, with that in mind, we feel that uh, you know, the need for new software uh, across enterprises is underestimated. So, uh, and we, we feel that uh, strong product-oriented teams uh, stand to uh, ultimately win uh, in, in those, um, those opportunities, those, those markets. And that's a bit of a cliche in, in our region where you know, teams tend to be more technically oriented, more product oriented, right. uh, maybe not so experienced in the go to market uh, mm-hmm. side, but uh, very, very strong of their grasp of the product related needs uh, in the markets that Is they're it particularly B2B? competing in. You'd it's say? mostly B2B. Mostly B2B. Mostly B2B. Uh, but how do you overcome the, you know, the, the sales and marketing um, challenge, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's super competitive right now. Of course. Um, so one, we feel that when you start with a strong product, that's a good advantage uh, because the playbook in go-to-market is relatively well understood as opposed to, you know, so 
if I were to choose between a sales and marketing oriented team with a product that's lacking versus a product oriented team that might have some shortcomings on the go to market side, I think we as a firm always prefer to take the risk on the product strength and uh, hope that uh, you know sometimes with our uh, help and contribution that we can fill the gaps on Attract the go to market side. Uh, the, the talent. And are there any personal characteristics that you think should be highlighted in those entrepreneurs that uh, actually did well? Um, any personality traits, anything, you know, any... I think one thing that we place a lot of importance on is the feeling of alignment. We are able to get with the founding teams early on. Uh, from time to time, we come across founders where we feel that as investors or as partners uh, early on, we feel it would be difficult to feel like we're on the same side of the table right. with them. So uh, a genuine uh, spirit of partnership with uh, open communication um, seems to be uh, important, at least for us, uh, in what we are generally drawn towards. Mm -hmm. Have you felt that with this, you know, with the success of the last few years, you, there's more competition in the VC market there? Of course, I think you know, over the last few years, uh, venture capital has gotten so competitive. There's so much uh, sort of new types of money that have entered the market that uh, you know, the, the competition is certainly there. Uh, that's why you know, we feel like uh, you know, uh, our uh, sort of reputation and our uh, relationships with our portfolio companies uh, becomes a, a big competitive advantage uh, in terms of you know uh, getting referred to the the top founding teams as a uh, you know preferred investor uh, in their early rounds right now for the less nice topic at the at, at the moment that we speak there is a, a war going on in in ukraine um how is that affecting the market in your region and how do you see this panning out of course is nobody knows right? i mean uh it's a tragic situation uh, first of all it uh, made us really put things in perspective i mean all of a sudden you know uh, priorities shifted across the board i mean uh, maybe fortunately we don't have any ukrainian uh, companies in our in our portfolio so none of our companies was uh, directly impacted uh, in, a, in a in a major way but we do have a few uh, companies with teams uh, or uh, employees in uh, in the ukraine so uh, of course you know we uh, prioritized the the companies to uh, make sure uh, People that they are assisted with the safety and the well-being of their, their teams and, uh, and and their families, of course. So uh, it was a, a bit of a wake-up call, uh, yeah. but uh, it's also uh, a, a, you know, very dramatic in, in kind of seeing that in, in tech industry that there's been this spirit of globalization uh, that sometimes geopolitics can uh, be very disruptive uh, right. towards that. But uh, we're also uh, now uh, experiencing that, uh, you know, as the the, the conflict uh, continues, the, that technology is actually one of the fronts where uh, this conflict is is taking place, and uh, the importance of uh, you know areas like cybersecurity in uh, you know. Uh, Assuring the, the the safety of uh, you know, even sovereign uh, sovereign uh, governments, but of yeah. course companies. So um, it's it's a, it's a reminder about the importance of technology. Uh, but of course, the the human uh, tragedy is, uh, is 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 very large, and uh, it's 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 quite uh, disturbing. To uh, it's a, it was a wake up call. Yeah. Uh, Do you think that there's going to be maybe a, a you know a brain drain, or I mean that's already happening, right? both from the Ukraine and from Russia. Do you expect that a lot of people will just move away from Russia? Um, even? We do expect it. We are already uh, starting to see it. Uh, again, you know, uh, fortunately, technology talent is one of the most portable uh, skills. And of course, the uh, advance in the, in the area of uh, remote work, uh, both the company's uh, ability to host uh, workforces that are distributed and remote right. and also the tool set that enables it have, have developed uh, strongly recently uh, that uh, it is uh, giving more options 
to some of the uh, technical talent in the region. Um, and, you know, we always feel, you know, we're, uh, our investment thesis is based on where uh, some of these companies are, are rooted. Uh, so we think that, uh, you know, uh, this will lead to uh, strong technical uh, success stories uh, continuing to come out of the region. Good. Well, congratulations on all your achievements. Thank great you. to see you in Lisbon. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much for speaking to thank me. Thank you. It's great to be here. Good to see you. Good to see you. See you another day.